Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into one of the Raspberry Pi's most powerful features. It's general purpose input output pins, better known as GPIO. If you're new to the Raspberry Pi world, the term GPIO might sound intimidating. Simply put, GPIO pins are tiny physical connectors on the Pi's board that let you interact with the outside world. They are your Pi's way of sensing and controlling things. Lights, sensors, motors, buttons, you name it. The Raspberry Pi 5 comes with a 40 pin GPIO. PIO header similar in layout to the Raspberry Pi 4 but with them um, advanced functionalities. Each pin can serve a variety of roles, digital input, digital output, I2C, SPI and more. Understanding these roles is key to unlocking the Pi's full potential. To begin using GPIO, you need to understand the pin numbering system. There are two common ways to refer to the pins. First one is board numbering. This uses the physical position of pins on the header. Second one is BCM numbering. This references the pins by their Broadcom chip identifiers. Most programming guides and libraries such as RPI.GPIO or GPIO0 prefer the BCM numbering system you'll often see something like GPIO2 or GPIO14 instead of pin 3 or pin 8. Raspberry Pi 5's GPIO pins include the power pins, the 3.3 volt and 5 volt to power small components. There's the ground pin to complete circuits, GPIO pins that can be configured for input or output, special function pins for I2C, SPI, and more advanced protocols. If you're confused, don't worry, keep a handy reference chart or bookmark and online and now diagram. Before we start plugging things in, a word of caution. The GPIO pins operate at 3.3 volts. Applying 5 volts directly to a GPIO pin can damage your Raspberry Pi. Also, each pin can source or sync only a limited amount of current, around 16 milliamperes per pin, with a recommended total limit of about 50 milliamperes for the entire board. Always use resistors and external components to project your Pi and never exceed these limits. Let's do a simple test. We'll connect an LED to a GPIO pin and control it with pipe. This is a great first project to build confidence. For your hardware setup, connect the LED's longer leg through a 220 ohm resistor to GPIO pin 18 and connect the LED's shorter leg to ground pin. For this software setup, ensure your Raspberry Pi operating system is installed in an updated open a terminal and install the GPIO0 library if you've not already. Open a pipe Python file through your command terminal and just run nano ledtest.py and I've already have the code here however I've also included it in the description so that I can you can easily get it. Once you have the code you'd be able to run it by just running the command python3 ledtest.py if everything is wired correctly you'll see your LED blink on and off every second. GPIO isn't just for outputting signals it's also for reading inputs. Beyond simple digital input output put the Raspberry Pi GPIO lets you interface with more complex devices. I2C allows you to communicate with sensors, EEPROMs, or LCD displays using just two wires, the SDA and SCL. SPI achieves faster communication with devices like high-speed ADCs or digital or digital potentiometers. UART allows you to talk to microcontrollers, GPS modules, or external serial devices. These advanced protocols can get complex, but understanding the basics of GPIO is your essential for step. Once you're comfortable with input and output, I2C and SPI are just new layers to explore. A few tips for working with GPIO safely and effectively. Use a breadboard and a jumper wires to prototype quickly. Always add current limiting resistors for LEDs or other components. Double check your wiring before powering up. Check out data sheets and photo tutorials when using new sensors or modules. You've now got the foundation you need to explore the possibilities of GPIO pins. What's next for you? Maybe try Try controlling a servo motor to build a simple connection. Have the DHT11 sensor measure temperature or tr try connecting your Raspberry Pi with an LCD display. Thanks for watching this GPIO masterclass. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe for more Raspberry Pi and electronics tutorials, and leave a comment with what you plan to build next.